kill the Jews. Death to the Jews in the name of Allah. That's the message that's been going out to Palestinians, and now they're responding with a wave of terrorist attacks all over Israel. Seems to be no end in sight. Secretary of State John Kerry says he'll be heading to the Middle East soon to try to help stop the violence. But Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas is ramping up the incitement against the Jewish state. Chris Mitchell brings us the story from Jerusalem. Israel says decades of incitement against Jews in Israel are behind Palestinian rage that's fueling the current wave of terrorism. Security here in Jerusalem is extremely tight. The government deployed more Israeli border police along with Jerusalem police to block entrances to Jerusalem's Arab neighborhoods like this one called Jabu Mokaber, where a number of the attackers came from. We hear again and again the slogan, Itbach el Yahud, kill the Jews, knife the Jews, death to the Jews in the name of Allah, in the name of defending Islam, in the, in the name of defending the Al-Aqsa Mosque. In a televised speech on Wednesday, Abbas accused Israel of increasing what he called its aggressive offensive against Palestinians and holy sites. What sends young people out with uh, butcher knives to attack Israelis, this phenomenon, is that it emanates from incitement, and particularly religious incitement. Incitement uh, around the uh, false accusation that Israel seeks to change the status quo on the Temple Mount. Israel was hoping Abbas would use his speech to calm the situation, but instead he didn't condemn the current wave of terror, nor call for a halt to attacks. He charged Israel with what he called field executions and said two teens who carried out a stabbing attack of an Israeli teenager early this week were martyrs. Their parents said they went to buy candy, but this security camera footage clearly shows the boys brandishing knives. One of the teens was killed as he tried to attack a policeman, but the other is alive and receiving treatment in an Israeli hospital. Yet Abbas said he was dead. Foreign Minister Director General Dory Gold pointed out that Abbas has been stoking the fire. No less than Mahmoud Abbas made the famous comment on September 16th of this year, we welcome every drop of blood spilled in Jerusalem. They, Israelis, have no right to desecrate the Al-Aqsa Mosque with their filthy feet. What is this? Social media is also helping to spread incitement and lies to the younger generation like this Hamas video that shows how to stab a Jew. On Wednesday, a Palestinian tried to stab a police officer at the Damascus Gate of the Old City. A television crew caught his attempted escape on film as he was shot and killed by security forces. A short time later, another terrorist stabbed a woman in her 70s at Jerusalem's central bus station. She managed to board the bus. The terrorist was shot and killed. Israelis are bracing themselves for Friday when Palestinians have called for another day of rage. And for now, the terror shows no signs of abating. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, near Jabu Mukaber, Jerusalem. Thanks, Chris. Boy, that, that's a tough thing for the Israelis. How do you handle this, something like that? What if, what if we had five million people, let's say, in America, in all these cities, decided to go and start stabbing innocent civilians? It would be chaos. Well, they've got chaos going over there, but the Israelis know how to take care of it. And I'm sure uh, Secretary Kerry is going to make a big difference when he gets there. Uh-huh. Well, here at home, we're seeing it now, political correctness run amok. A former fire chief in Atlanta says that expressing his faith in a Bible study book led to the end of his career. And he says that's unthinkable in the United States of America. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. Here's John. Thanks, Pat. That fire chief, Kelvin Cochran, just had the first hearing in his lawsuit against the city of Atlanta after being fired over statements he wrote about homosexuality and a Christian men's devotional. City officials are trying to get his case dismissed, but a federal judge hasn't yet made a decision whether Cochran's complaint will move forward. Abigail Robertson brings us the latest from Atlanta. 
once one of the highest ranked fire officials in the country. Former Atlanta Fire Chief Calvin Cochran has now seen his career ripped away from him for expressing his religious views in a Bible study book. This faith and patriotism that caused me to be a firefighter in the first place. Chief Cochran dedicated 34 years of his life to serving in the public fire department and was appointed Atlanta Fire Chief in 2008. But last November, he was abruptly terminated from his dream job after a complaint to a gay city councilman. The councilman then went to Atlanta Mayor Kasim Reed. The complaint involved a passage in the book about biblical views of sex, including statements against homosexuality, using terms like perversion, inappropriate, and unclean. The complaint called that passage offensive. For that faith uh, to lead to all the career successes that I've had, to ultimately conclude or end my career by expressing it in a book, uh, it's just unthinkable in the United States of America. Cochran asked permission from the Atlanta Ethics Department before writing the faith-based book, and he only distributed it to co-workers who had already established a relationship with as believers. He even gave a copy to Mayor Reed, who congratulated him on writing it and promised to read it. Cochran was shocked to learn his book would be offensive to anybody. Uh, it was such a shock to everyone. Uh, that it would occur and it would be so abrupt. There was a lot of just heartache and heartbreak and tears. The city launched an investigation to find out if coworkers felt Chief Cochran had created a discriminatory environment, including possible discrimination against gays. The investigation found that he hadn't, but Mayor Reed fired Chief Cochran, claiming he would not tolerate discrimination of any kind in his administration. In February of this year, Chief Cochran filed a lawsuit against the city of Atlanta, saying he had been wrongfully fired. Calvin Cochran is fighting to prove Americans should not have to live in fear of being terminated from their jobs because of their religious beliefs. David Cortman, one of the lawyers defending Chief Cochran, says this is not just a fight about vindicating the chief, but rather a fight to protect every American's right to freedom of speech. The reason this case is so important to everyone is we have the federal government telling someone, if you don't agree with their views, with their orthodoxy, you are not fit to hold a position. You are not fit to make a living. That should worry everyone. Chief Cochran says his former co-workers are afraid to express their support or reactions because of fear of the potential consequences. They can't say, I believe, like Chief Cochran believes, for fear that they would be terminated as well. No American should have to choose between living out their faith and keeping their job. Since his termination, faith communities in the Atlanta area and around the country have given the Cochran family a tremendous outpouring of love and support. He asked for continued prayer for the mayor and the city, as well as for strength for his wife and children. I've never felt that I was in this all by myself, not for a moment. Chief Cochran stays positive by believing that all suffering is for the glory of God and that he would not be going through this had God not prepared him for it. Reporting from Atlanta, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Thanks, Abby. Pat, according to a city investigation, they found no evidence of discrimination, but according to Cochran's attorneys, they say he was fired anyway because he might discriminate in the future. Uh, this is the shocking thing. This man is, if you happen to see his face, he is a black man. Where are the black people? Black Lives Matter. Why don't they stand up and talk about Steve Cochran? It's time that um, they stand for one of their own, but at the same time, all of us need to stand for a man like this. He is just expressing his faith. And in America, we should have a right to hold our own private religious beliefs. And <clears throat> the fact that he believes a certain thing having to do with sexual purity, it is so clear in the Bible. It's over and over and over again in the Old and New Testament. And so all he's doing is uh, reaffirming biblical values that are held by hundreds of millions of people around the world and by an overwhelming majority of people here in this United States. Are we going to allow a few people, you know, Surveys show, surveys show, 1% of the American people are lesbian, 1%, and perhaps 4%, maybe 5% are homosexual. That's it. And are we going to allow this tiny minority to uh, take away the jobs of people who believe uh, contrary to their beliefs? 
Are we, what kind of a nation do we have? And the chief, uh, I mean, the mayor thinks he's being so noble. I'm not going to allow any discrimination in my administration. Baloney! What he's saying is, I'm politically correct, and I'm going to fire anybody who doesn't agree with political correctness. Don't let this country turn into Russia. We just don't need it. John? Pat, speaking of Russia, Russia's current operations in Syria show Vladimir Putin has been quickly modernizing his country's military over the last several years. And as Ephraim Graham reports, only now is the rest of the world getting to see it. After two weeks of air and missile strikes in Syria, a Russian defense ministry official says its combat jets destroyed militant facilities near Aleppo, where explosives for suicide bombers were being made. And the New York Times reports, actions like that show Vladimir Putin has upgraded and modernized Russia's military much more than Western intelligence and military officials had realized. The paper says Putin is showcasing his ability to conduct operations beyond his country's borders with a public demonstration of new weapons, tactics and strategy. And Russia isn't only flexing its muscle with advanced hardware. The country has deployed field kitchens and even singers and dancers to entertain the troops. Some American analysts say it's a sign that Moscow is in this one for the long haul. Russia's growing push to prop up Syria's government is raising new scrutiny and questions about the CIA's secret support of Syrian rebels fighting President Bashar Assad and just how far it will go to take on Putin's allies. And it seems the U.S. won't go very far. To bring to bear to this effort. White House spokesman uh, Josh Earnest told reporters uh, Tuesday, uh, countering Russia's involvement in Syria doesn't rate nearly as high on the scale as battling ISIS. And voters are responding to the actions of Russia's and America's leaders. The latest Fox News poll shows 53% think Russian President Vladimir Putin has the upper hand in Syria, and only 22% disagree. And when it comes to President Obama, 52% say he is weak and indecisive as a leader, and only about a third call him strong and decisive. Ephraim Graham, CBN News. Thanks, Ephraim. And Pat, the way the New York Times put it, Russia is using Syria as a proving ground. Well, there's no question that that's what's happening. And uh, uh, but before it's finished, look, Bashar Assad has no, no uh, power base at all. So what's going to happen is Vladimir Putin will therefore be the dictator of Syria. He will tell the government what to do and how to do it and when to do it. And this gives him a launching pad, as I've shown you a few days ago, into the oil-rich Middle East. He will control the oil routes and he will control the oil fields. And before long, he will dominate something that is so precious for uh, European uh, economies. Uh, he's a long-range chess player, and he's beating our novice president every time he turns around. And, um, you know, what does our president say? Well, the major issue confronting him that he's going to be involved in is climate change. Baloney. What good is climate change if all the climate is taken away from us? And that's what's going to happen, all the territory. But uh, Putin is just taking step by step by step. But according to the New York Times, he actually is, is, is testing out his weapon systems and his uh, uh, command and control structure of his military. And uh, Syria is the proving ground, but he will... Uh, uh, he's going to beat the forces opposed to Assad. Then he's going to control Assad. Then he's going to tell Assad, you do what I say or else you're out of office. And away he goes. And then he'll have a launching pad. He'll begin to bring more and more troops in. And uh, he's got a, a, a naval base now in the Mediterranean. I mean, it's unbelievable what he's gotten. And at no expense, he just walked in and took it because the United States said, well, we're out of this. Oh. <laughs> In our lifetime, we're seeing the dismantlement of American power, and it's happening so fast. We're giving away what's taken decades to gain.